This is KGW News at Sunrise. A close call for an Oregon Congresswoman, Representative Suzanne Bonamici and her husband were hit by a car Friday night. But we'll be okay. We'll walk you through exactly what happened. Plus. I think it's really cool and that, and that it smells really bad. Out of the mouths of babes. Yes, a dead whale washing up at Fort Stevens State Park on the Oregon coast over the weekend. We'll explain what happens next and what scientists hope to learn. We also want to say good morning on this Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. There are lots of events going on and we'll go over some of those coming up. But first, we want to get a look at that weather forecast. Rod is here with a look at that. Weather looks good today. In fact, I think overall this could turn out to be one of the quieter weather weeks we've had in a while. Here's a look Perfect. at our <laughs> radar. The, the bullseye chance for scattered showers today will likely continue to be the north coast. And it's a fairly wet morning for you folks. But notice really nothing up and down I-5. Uh, the forecast does call for a spotty shower chance inland, but on the flip side, most of the time you're out and about, you're going to find partly cloudy skies, meaning you'll feel uh, and see a little bit of sunshine. Uh, notice the flags, uh, Pioneer Courthouse Square, looking down at the bricks. They are not moving. This will be a light wind day after yesterday's gusty winds. That'll be a nice uh, change of pace as well. Right now we're at 41 degrees. Here's your day. Temperature-wise, 47 degrees at noon. We might just get up to 50 or just stay at about 49. Partly cloudy skies, light winds, just a spotty shower chance. Back to you. All right, Rod, thank you. Well, our top story this half hour, an update on the conditions of U.S. Congresswoman Suzanne Bonamici and her husband. Both are at home recovering after getting hit by a car on Friday night. Devin Haskins joins us from the newsroom this morning with more. Devin, Representative Bonamici is tweeting about how she's doing. Yeah, good morning, Brenda. Bonamici says she and her husband are doing much better. She tweeted a statement just after one o'clock yesterday afternoon, writing, thank you to everyone for your well wishes and to the first responders and healthcare workers who provided the care we needed. My husband and I are continuing to recover at home and are grateful for your kind thoughts and support. It was just before nine o'clock on Friday night near Northwest 19th and Everett. The communications director for Congressman Bonamici said she and her husband were leaving an event that night. Police say a driver going at a slow speed turned into the couple in a crosswalk and knocked them down. Representative Bonamici was treated for a concussion and a cut. Her husband had minor injuries. We just want her to have a very speedy recovery, her husband as well. Congresswoman Bonamici is a fighter, and we just uh, know that like everything else in her life, she's up to the challenge and we just want her to get better real quick. Portland police say the driver that hit them stayed at the intersection and cooperated with police and was not cited. Blair. Devin, thank you. Turns out Sam Adams, Mayor Ted Wheeler's now former senior advisor, was forced out of his position for allegedly bullying employees. That's according to a statement from Mayor Wheeler and redacted documents of the complaints obtained by the Oregonian. We're talking almost a dozen instances over a 16 month period involving belittling, interrupting and yelling towards mostly female employees. In one account, a female city attorney wrote in an email to city attorney Robert Taylor that Adams Adams berated and condescended to her in a pair of meetings, saying it was, quote, unprofessional in a way that I have not previously experienced, either at the city or in other workplaces. Now, despite what we have learned, Adams maintains that he is stepping down for health reasons, telling the Oregonian in a text late Friday, quote, in all my years working for the city, I have never witnessed a city director of human resources and a city attorney speaking at, a, at an official city news conference offering sweeping statements about HR complaints that apparently did not meet the threshold to even be officially investigated. Now, what we don't know, if Adams was aware of these complaints at the time that they were filed, how many were investigated, and if Adams ever faced any consequences because of them. Other headlines we're tracking for you this morning. A fire destroyed a home in North Plains. The call came in around seven o'clock last night. No one was inside at the time, but firefighters say the person who lived there now needs a new place to stay. Investigators are looking into how this fire started. 
Divers recovered the body of an Oregon woman reported missing more than a month ago. 58-year-old LaDawn Bloom was found submerged in her car in Neawana Creek in Seaside. A tow truck retrieved the vehicle from the water on Saturday. Seaside police and Clatsop County investigators are now looking into what happened. And in the Columbia River Gorge, a car went over an embankment near Vista House yesterday morning, that car coming to rest on its side. Corbett Fire was able to get the driver out. Multnomah County deputies say that person was impaired but unhurt, and they did cite the driver for the crash. And those are some of your Monday morning headlines. At some point this week, Seaside Aquarium will perform a necropsy to figure out what killed a sperm whale that washed up ashore near Fort Stevens State Park this weekend. It's 40 feet long and getting a lot of attention from beachgoers. I talked with a few people who made the trip to get a closer look. It was a rare attraction for all ages. I think it's really cool and that, and that it smells really bad. It's an amazing part of nature is what it is. It's cool to see a whale. One of the ocean's greatest predators, now a spectacle on the sand. I just think they're such amazing animals, mammals, living out there. Uh, I don't know how they do it. It's wild. Over the weekend, this whale washed up onto the beach near Fort Stevens State Park, right next to the Peter Iredale shipwreck. I think it's a good educational experience for people. It's just unusual, you know. You don't see that every day or rarely ever. First reported as a humpback whale, which is common, seen as about a half dozen humpbacks wash up on the Oregon coast each year. Marine experts later determined this one was different. It was a sperm whale. You can tell by its large jaw, so they have this really big mouth with a um lined with a bunch of teeth on it, so it has a very distinct look. Tiffany Booth works at the Seaside Aquarium, which is part of the Marine Mammal Stranding Network, meaning they respond to animals dead or alive along the Oregon coast. They then report their findings to Portland State University. Sunday morning, they remove the whale's lower jaw and teeth. A lot of scientific value can come out of the lower jaw, um, and unfortunately, there are people out there that will kind of come and carve the teeth out. And so it's really important for us to get that whole jaw off as soon as we possibly can. It's a 40 foot long male. They're planning a necropsy later this week to find out why it died, focusing on the large propeller like gash in its side. I don't know, it's just feel bad for animals. There's not a lot of whales left. Um, and so it's, it's always sad when we see one that gets beached. And that's where it will stay as it naturally decomposes. Marine experts encourage people to look, but at a distance. But we ask people not to touch. Um, marine mammals can carry diseases that can be transmitted to humans and pets. So it's just a good idea, since especially we don't know exactly what happened to the whale to kind of keep your distance. As people marvel from afar, they're left with a wave of emotions. No, it's not sad. It's great that the public gets to see this. It makes me feel like I want to throw up. I feel awed by, by whales in general. It don't make me start to cry. <laughs> The kids are the ones who crack me up because I they know. just say exactly what the situation is. And I have is. to be honest, it did smell really bad and in oh. part because it was so windy. It was just oh, like blowing yeah. the smell right into us. It was it was lovely. You deserve some <laughs> hazard pay, but, but well done with that package. I was reading after I saw that this weekend that sperm whales, you know, they swim in deep water so you don't mm -hmm. usually see them from the shore. You've got to go out on a oh, boat. Gotcha. I didn't think we'd have a smooth transition from that to my weather, but Blair <laughs> gave it to me when she talked about the winds blowing. So thank you very much. You're Here's welcome. a look at how strong those winds were. It turned out to be windiest, if you will. Uh, down in the Mid Valley, Salem McNary Field piped a 48 mile per hour wind gust. This was yesterday, of course. McMinnville 45, not as windy down in, uh, in Portland 38, but the winds were so consistent, right? We had hours and hours hitting 30 mile per hour wind gusts, and then Aurora down in the valley, 37 mile per hour wind gusts. Those winds are gone, and one of the big headlines today into tomorrow is light winds, all areas. The Gorge Coast, Cascades, south winds today up and down I-5, generally just five to 10 miles per hour. The flow pattern is split. You've got one fetch of activity here, another one down here. Um, there are more flood advisories. 
In Northern California, heavy precipitation again today. Storm warnings up for the Sierra for another couple feet of snow that direction. But here at home, pretty much a dry day east of the Cascades, and you can see the showers right now along the north coast. This will continue to be the best chance to pick up some rain today. And future cast shows that here we are at 830 this morning. There is a spotty shower chance in the valley, but look at all the spots where you can see the map. That's partly cloudy skies. So I expect we'll have a decent bit of sunshine today with that spotty shower chance and really a lot of us probably just staying dry. Showers pick up a little bit overnight tonight and then tomorrow it's the same deal. A lot of dry time with some passing showers. Here comes the next front. This is Wednesday morning, maybe a half of an inch of total rainfall for the Portland area and snow levels will continue to be at about 3000 feet. The mountains picked up eight uh, inches of snow yesterday. So folks going up there today on this holiday have uh, a good chance to experience some fresh powder. Here are the numbers, 43 in Kelso, 41 Salem, colder down Eugene. They've dropped all the way off to 34 and some chilly temperatures out east where a good bit of sunshine will be found today as well. So light winds, partly cloudy, upper 40s, a spotty shower chance, similar numbers up into southwest Washington. This shows battleground up to 48 degrees. Two fronts this week. The first one is Wednesday. That's a rainy morning breaking in the showers. The next one is not as strong and that's Saturday and in between. There's a lot of dry time this week with light winds more days than not. Back to you. Love that. Thank you, Rod. Hey, this morning we are highlighting some of the ways that you can celebrate MLK Day. Coming up, how a historic black church in Portland is spreading Dr. King's message.